Hey, good morning, everybody. Everything's dry as a bone now. Packed up, tight, and light. That's always a great way to start things off. So let's go and uh, see what we see today. true Scottish style of a little footpath just along the road. It's one of the things I love about this country. They have a just a good deal of respect for the walker and uh, always provides you just a safer way to do what you do. Like, Gotta love that. Thank you, Scotland. <laughs> this little guy just flipped over on his back. It must happen often with these little fellas. Oh. But they're just so wonderful, all the colors on them. And then their shell. And their feet, they have like these little grippy toes. Oh, and they're just so tiny. There you go. We'll leave you be. just amazing when you look at them close I know a lot of people they're scared of bugs but like most of the time they can't hurt you and uh, there's really no need to be frightened by them they're just like so different from us but kind of the same too like they're just trying to find their food and live their little lives just little tiny lives but just because we're bigger doesn't make us better why big people like us are so frightened of those wee things is, I don't know, cracks me up. But even they need a hand once in a while, I guess. It doesn't seem like they're able to get back over. If they fall upside down, man. Well, off of that little road and back to some forest and kind of rolly hills today forest in here it's mostly pine and just much younger than along the walk no way oh, oh my gosh look at this do you see what I see No, I didn't know they had them here. Oh my gosh. Like it can't be, but it is. The leaves, the leaves are correct. Right? Like it's gotta be. <laughs> wow so it's early i think for blueberries back in the states they look almost the same the insides are like red like i, I kind of was looking at them and bit one or two in half kind of inspecting it and like the blueberries in the states are kind of like whitish like on the inside they're lighter than these are red and i kind of put a couple in my put them in the gum for a minute and they kind of taste like it so i just ate a couple of them and uh i'm pretty sure those are like wild blueberries here in scotland like oh my gosh i didn't really want to eat eat a lot of them because i mean i don't know 
Oh, here comes some more hikers. What I started talking about was the forest back in there. All along Loch Lomond, it was like big old oaks. And, and then it, it switched over. I turned inland a little bit by Cashel. And there was lots of little pines. And you know, now I'm just thinking about those berries. And then I'm pretty sure that the blueberries, they like, like, they, they like real acidic soil and stuff. So you see them growing in that and it kind of fits. So man, I'm, I'm almost positive that's what they were. I will caution people, however, like don't just eat fruits that you find. Cause like, if you're not sure what they are, they could probably make you pretty sick. And there's a lot of things out there like foxglove and stuff that will just outright kill you. But I've eaten, whew, I've eaten my weight in wild berries, like all across the States really didn't expect that here and i'm almost positive I, I, it's probably a different like variety of them a european one or something because they seem just a little bit different but yes what a find but unless you sure don't eat stuff you just find in the woods all right <laughs> Check out that tree. I think if I was gonna give it a name, I would call it the walking maple. Cause uh, it seems to be walking down the beach. <laughs> All right, into the town of Balmaha. I think after here I can camp again. So I would have had to come all this way last night and I'm glad I didn't. So I've come about eight miles. Heading out of here, it's just under 20 to the end of this trail. Now I stopped in, little store, one of my favorite little combinations, one can of Coke and one can of beer. And look at this one, mm -hmm. yeasty boys. <laughs> I had to buy that. So I'm gonna down these, hoof it on up. Man, under 20 to go. Woo! I think this is gonna be like the last big climb that I got up the iconic, iconic hill. So, just at the bottom, let's go up here and see what we get. Yes. Camping, now leaving. Yeah. This is what I would have had to go to last night. And whew, it would have been a pretty rough one at the end of that day. It would have been 30 miles for me to get to here. And uh, man, that was, that's just no fun. <laughs> I like to enjoy the trails and uh, poor planning on my part, put me in that predicament. So, but adapt and overcome. Here I am, and in good spirits too. No stopping me. Uh -uh. I want to, but I know how to climb a mountain. Drop it into low gear and just ease your way up. Honestly, I just focus on the breathing, not the pace. And uh, just take it as slow as you need to. As long as you don't stop, you're making forward progress. Look at that though. It's 
Still a little ways to go with a whoo. So there goes the trail and uh, I gotta get to the top. Whew, almost there. I was just about up to that top there. And uh, I just ran into a group, young women from America hiking. And, oh man, they recognized me like, hey, is that Huck? So we stopped for a minute and we're chatting, they're setting out. They got, oh man, they got a wonderful adventure ahead of them. I don't remember anybody's name though, but happy hiking y'all, whoo. This is it. And here is the view from the top. Worth it every time. That way, that's the way that I'm headed. Somewhere out there is Dryman and Mill Guy and the end of this trail. Oh. Oh. I won't get there just standing here hobbling, so. Let's go back down, but yes! Woo! Fella there on his bicycle riding up. He's uh, well, he's off right now, but he's a park ranger in Trossachs National Park. That kind of what I was walking through this morning. And uh, we got to talking and I asked him about the blueberries. And uh, he was seemed kind of skeptical, uh, but I showed him a picture and he had an app on his phone that he was able to, and it came up, blueberries, bilberries or something they called them here maybe. And, uh, properly identified and uh if you're wondering why i don't use those apps is because like especially especially over here like the data it costs so much for me to use my phone up here i really got to manage the data like it's like a nightmare man to, to be able to do all that i'm doing with the videos and everything so i really don't have and the battery life too i think in the, the battery that i'm carrying I just got to manage it like never before over here. So I just, I don't have any of that to use, but he was able to positively identify. So Jerry, oh, thank you, man. And I tell you what, the next time I see him, oh, people are going to think a bear came through here because I'm going to eat them all. <laughs> but blueberries, bilberries, something like that. Mmm. I knew it, man. I knew it. <laughs> but they're a little more red, I think, than the on the inside. But, mm. yeah. So, rolling on. Woo! <laughs> hey, of course. Kind of short on water. I keep my eye open for a little stream or burn or something. I got, I got real used to just not, I, like, not really carrying very much of it at all, because, like, I don't know, every quarter mile you'd come across some little creek or something. But, I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen one. There's one or two right at, coming down the bottom of Conic Hill. And I should have, in hindsight, probably checked my maps for that and watered up there, but... That'll be all right. Oh, look at that little guy. It's like a little stoat or something, isn't he? 
Oh, the wee and sleek and beastie. Just zipping along. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm definitely not the one you want reading those Robbie Burns poems, but fortunately for that little fella, it turned out a lot better than old Robbie Burns's uh, poem. Well, the little beastie in his poem didn't make it. It's kind of a sad one, but I really like that. This guy, he turned out all right. <laughs> Come to think of it, like a stoat is more like a Weasley kind of a thing than that guy. We and Sneaky Beastie will do. <laughs> Man, it's hot. This is like the hottest day. I've ever had in Scotland. I don't know how hot it is, but pass by a little spot back there. It's like a farm and they have some camping available. Dryman camping, something like that. But Tracy was the, the woman that was working there and she let me top off my water right from the spigot. Mm, so cold, so good. Thank you, Tracy. Here's a sign you don't see often. They got weird wording over here. Road liable to substance. Some subsidence. Uh, <laughs> try it again. Road liable to subsidence. <laughs> this is uh, one of those opportunities. I could just remain silent. It seemed pretty smart. But uh, I'll be honest. I'm not sure what that sign means. Subsidence. I don't know, like maybe crumbly? It's not very crumbly. <laughs> maybe we'll find out walking along. We'll see. It's like we could be in Wisconsin right now. <laughs> I knew it was here, but it still catches me by surprise and it so fits with Wisconsin. Look at the signpost here. Oh man. The John Muir Way and the West Highland Way intersect for just a wee little bit here. I didn't know exactly where. Oh man, look at the cows too. Yeah, Holstein. Wow, I'm gonna be right back here. I think this would be maybe like mile 25, 30 or something like that for the John Muir Trail. Heading from west to east like I will be doing. But, man, that's crazy. That's awesome. Good old Johnny Muir, man. <laughs> If any of you wondering what Wisconsin looks like, it looks like this. <laughs> Hi there, friend. <laughs> Catching bugs like a champ, she was. <laughs> Turn up the beat. Wow. Do you know what kind of bird that is? A robin. Is it? Yeah. It's just a tiny robin. Tiny robin redbreast. 
Like that one is a, there is a wee skinny one and a wee fat one. Oh. I think that one's like the old one. Yeah. Batman and Robin. Batman oh, Batman and Robin. Robin. Yeah. <laughs> I just stopped to check out that turn up the beat. And, uh, man, wouldn't you know it, there's two of the nicest women that I ever met working there. And they were just closing up, but they sold me a cider, and they each had one as well. And we sat out and talked for a while. Man, had a local cider made just over there, I guess. And, uh, fabulous place. So if you're hiking the West Highland Way, Stop in, check it out. They got coffee and all sorts of stuff in there, but I kind of have it in my mind to press on and just get down to Mill Guy and finish this trail. And uh, that little break is just what I needed, I think. Over there is the Glen Goyne Distillery. And, uh, Probably worthy of a stop, but I don't feel that they're open anymore today. Oh, <laughs> it's well in the evening now, five, six, probably closer to six, I reckon. It's kind of one of the funny things when you walk, different from like the, the civilized world is you kind of always have time. They're part of the civilized world though. And they keep certain hours. So at a certain time, then they stop. And uh, that's the way it is. But when you're walking, it kind of moves slower. You can just stop when you want. I really enjoy that. There's a wee fairy house. The remarkable view. Little rain coming down to see me on into the end, I reckon. <laughs> it's been so warm today. Bring it on. <laughs> so maybe three miles to go and uh, makes about, I think by my accountant, uh, maybe a 27, 27, 28 mile day for me today. But it's just been fantastic, this whole trail. It's been amazing and it, it's like diversity of landscapes and the people along the way and like I just can't can't say enough about it. There's a uh, I don't know, there's so much. So much here. The north to the south and such a short trail. Ah, oh, man, it's just incredible. Really a magical, a magical walk this has been. And uh, I think people that are want to start out, try a long distance trail. This one, this would be the one, I think. Because there's ample opportunities along the way to adjust your gear or get your foods and you don't need to you don't need to carry as much I guess you always you don't need to carry as much as you think but you learn that along the way and this man what a way it's been <laughs> just absolutely loved it and right now man my phone is getting grumpy with me it's got very little battery left and uh, but my heart just so full man <laughs> like overjoyed from this trail every day has been so full they always are hiking but man this trail just magical absolutely magical
I just hope the battery lasts to the end now. <laughs> This is the This is the memorial for the the fire. I forget the name of it. So back in the 20s and 30s during the depression, uh, there were just so many people that were out of home and work and they would gather here on this hill where that memorial is. And uh, there was always a fire going there and they would just talk about things. And uh, it was just sort of like a, a little community of tramps and vagabonds and just people to just getting together and enjoying the company, telling stories. I wish there was more of that in this world nowadays. People are too busy for that nonsense, right? <laughs> All right, just stopped to talk with a fella uh, by the name of Rowan. And he's kind of from around here and he was telling me about that fire back there. Oh, there's the way. And uh, Craig Island is what, it's, what it was called, I guess. And like in the 20s and 30s, somewhere like between the wars, they closed down a lot of the mines and so that was uh, kind of like I, I had thought. People would just gather there and he'd been up there some years back and it, you were able to read the inscription down below and now it's pretty well worn away. So Crook Allen, fire monument. Thank you so much, Rowan. All right, just a mile or two, two miles, I think, to go and man, like 8% battery. So saving it for the end, we'll see y'all up there. Unless something else happens. This is Mudock County Park. Um, I don't know if it's county, but municipal park or something. Absolutely beautiful forest in here. It's uh, just these big old trees. There's a river running through there. And kind of grassy in between. Little mosses abound. Fantastic park. Getting pretty close now. There's a bench. Country. Mugdot Country Park. There we go. Awesome. And, uh, which way is my blaze? from that way this way probably they always have the signs kind of from where you're coming since most people are going north they see that and go that way facing this way if it's not it we'll find out in a minute holy crap a lot of bicycles coming on the hill Woo! <laughs> Stragglers. There's a blaze. Yes. Hi. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. People. People are half the fun here. There's a blaze. I might be able to find, like, a place in here. I can't, but... It's so heavily used. There's groups of people biking, groups of people jogging. I think fishing on the river. Oh. oh. Here's the town. I haven't seen any real good spots either. Everything's got a lot of standing water. It's wet. more people ahead. Let's see. <sighs> hey, 
it's backwards for me. <laughs> but <laughs> Rob Roy's cave. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yes. Yes. It's a little after eight and uh, I made it. <laughs> Everything around here it's closed up, but it kind of seems fitting since I did it all backwards and man, oh man, Whew. my phone's about to die. So I'm just going to make this short and sweet. My name is Huck and I love to hike. I just finished the West Highland way and uh, man, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be heading to Helensburg and starting up the John Muir Way uh, just as quick as I can get over there. So, thanks for following along. Yeah!